Hello everyone, welcome to a Salad CLI tutorial. Today we'll be linking Phoenix Miner to your Salad account so that you can directly mine to your Salad balance. This video will be split into two different parts. The first one will be the main tutorial and then the second one will explore in more details the different command line options available. I suggest you have both the gist open as well as this video so if, if you ever get lost, you can always compare each and every one of the options. Without further ado, let's just dive right in. What you'll first want to do is get your rig ID as well as miner ID from the logs. To access the logs, there are two different ways. The first one is by going in the app to the earn tab, then miner details, scrolling down a bit, and then pressing show folder. If this button does not work or is not there, then what you can also do is using the window search button, opening that folder, scrolling all the way down to the salad folder, then opening the logs folder, and then you'll have the same thing. Once you're there, open the log folder, it should be called main.log, but you can also use main.old if you can't find this in the main. What you want to do is find the mine ID and rig ID. These will usually appear right when you start to mine, so when time is equal to 00, zero just above that. What we'll do is try to find it in this folder. As you can see, it is somewhere right above here. There we go. It's right here. So, since we're using Phoenix Miner, we will be using Ethermine because Salad uses Ethermine on Phoenix Miner. What you want to do is keep both this as well as this since we'll be needing it when we link directly to your Salad account. Next up, we'll be using Phoenix Miner. Now, there are two ways to be able to directly do this. The first one is by clicking on Salad, then Plugin Bin, then finding the latest version of Phoenix Miner installed and opening it. Should it not be here, you can also download it directly from internet and then you'll just be able to follow through uh, the same as now. What you'll want to do is right click, New, and then make a text document. For conveniency, we'll call this one start. Once that's done, just open it and type at echo off. After this, we'll be linking directly Phoenix Miner with this bat file. What we'll be doing is typing in Phoenix Miner.exe and then we add the extra options. The first one we'll want to add is pool. So you do dash pool. There are two different pools you can use, US and EU. As you probably have guessed, US will be for United States region and EU for Europe region. Whichever you are closest to, you'll want to be using. In my case, I am closer to EU, so I'll be using SSL 2 dot slash slash eu1.ethermine.org and then 2.555 for the port. If I was in US, I would have typed U, uh, us1.ethermine.org 5555. Let's just revert to EU. Next up, you want to use the wallet. So you'll just type in dash while and then go back to your main log file. This is when we'll be using the wallet address as well as the worker ID. First, copy the wallet address and paste it in your start file. Add a dot and then copy the rig ID as well and paste it in as well. To so save this file as a bat. If you go here, file, save as, and you'll want to be wary here, you don't want to save as type text. So you want to save as type all files. And then over here, start, you write just dot bat. 
and you can just save that. You, you can now close this file as well as the main log file. As you can see, a new file here has been created called start, and you'll see it's a bad file. Double clicking this will What it is now doing is allocating the DAG, which will be placed into my VRAM, as well as start mining. You want to wait for the DAG file to be 100%, which is when it will be fully deployed on your VRAM. This can take up to a few seconds, no more than a couple of minutes at most. The DAG has now been generated completely. As you can see, we are receiving requests and our ETH speed has now been updated. This value will be different for every different card, so fear not if yours is lower or higher, as it is dependent on your card and will be different for many people. And now it's just a waiting game. Essentially, you are now mining to the pool and it is linked, hopefully, to your standard account. What you're looking out for is shares that are created. This will usually print out three big green lines, which will just say share found, and then difficulty of the share. There it is. We just found a share. Now this is what we'll be looking for. They will just keep happening and you'll just want to leave your PC running and it will slowly find shares for you. If you get stale shares or incorrect shares, this is usually when you should change pool or because something was badly set up on your part. I'll let you watch the, watch the guide again or read the gist as well. Note that it will not appear directly on the graph because the graph only updates every 15 minutes. This is from a pe previous mining session I just had, but it will only appear within the 15 minute period. Note that CLI mining will still give you XP in the app as well as balance. Anyways, that's pretty much it with the main tutorial. We have now learned how to link it up to your standard account, and we are now starting to mine and getting shares. There's nothing else to do but wait and get standard balance. We'll now move on to the second part of the video. We'll now be exploring extra command options as extra things you might know because they're pretty interesting. Oh, look at that. We found another share. I'll just be closing this now in the meantime, just so we can proceed better. So what you can do is actually delete the start.txt file because we will not be needing it. We just want to keep the start at bat file. Right click it and press edit. Here we'll be exploring any extra command you want. Save for one that uh, I don't want to, I want to be covered in case CL, SSL, EU1, ethermine.org stops. For example, let's say that it stops at some point, which is highly unlikely, unlikely, but still, you can still add a second pool option. To do this, add dash pool two, and then space, and then just like the first one, you can add whatever you want. In my case, I want to add us one dot ethermine dot org, then two dots five 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 and then just want to separate that from the other place. If I had placed a US1 here, I can always put EU1 here as well. This is just as a preventive measure, should one or the other fail, and we want to try another one. This isn't very interesting though. Let's get to the fun part. Using CLI allows you to have extra commands like GPU usage. The command GPOW, for example, allows you to set a percentage of how much you want to use your GPU. For example, if I only want it to be used to 50%, I 
I can type GPAL50, which will only use 50% of my GPU. If you want 80, just type 80. And if you want 30, just type 30. Any percentage is actually acceptable. Next up, we'll be using the command T stop. Now the T stop is very powerful. What it will do is stop mining if your GPU reaches a certain temperature. This is useful if you know your PC will get hot or if you want to make sure it doesn't go above a certain temperature where you don't want it to go to. In my case, I don't want it to go above 90 degrees, so I'm going to just say T stop 90. This will stop mining at 90. Unfortunately, this command will completely stop mining and nothing gives the GPU the idea of restarting. So what it is usually paired with is T start, which will actually start mining again once it is below another temperature. Say for example that I want my GPU to restart when it's below 70. I'll just type in T start 70. Because of this, the values of my temperatures will be between about 90 to 70. This is actually very normal temperatures, especially on a laptop. Obviously, you can set your own values um, as you wish them to be. If you're like me, you might want also to change your core clock as well as memory clock on the go instead of having it uh, system based. Phoenix Miner provides the option to do so with, for example, C clock, which will actually impact the core clock. Note that for NVIDIA, you'll want to use relative values, for example, plus 500. But on AMD, you'll want to use direct values, such as normal 200, 2500. The same applies for M clock, which is the memory clock. If you're on NVIDIA, you, want, you might want to... There are many other options that are linked in the GIST which I heavily suggest you have a look at if you're uh, coming from this video directly, because it has various... This pretty much concludes uh, the video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it useful. If you need more help, feel free to contact me directly via Discord using my handle Angaros1263, where I will help you gladly if I have any time. And you can also co add a comment to this video. I will come uh, often regularly to watch it as well. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and see you in possibly another one.